it's Erin from Erin Elizabeth Designs back with floss tube number three. If you are returning, thanks for coming and joining me again today. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. So this is just a space um, for me to come and connect with you guys, show you my newest and latest designs, how I finished them, talk to you a little bit about um, how I'm going to be displaying them in my home. Um, those kinds of things, showing you different finishing ideas and kind of like the ins and outs behind the designs, um, what's coming, sneak peeks, all that fun stuff, and of course some hauls. So um, I've got lots to share today. This is my second time recording this video because I <clears throat> somehow deleted my one that I did on Sunday night. I stayed up nice and late and got it done um, after being about a week or so delayed from where I wanted to be for getting the video out. And then um, spent all Monday try, throughout the day trying to upload the video and it was having issues. And then I somehow managed to just delete the whole thing. So here we are, we're gonna film again. <laughs> Um, uh, after filming on Sunday, I went upstairs and I just got like hit with, um, the chills and I just was not feeling good at all. Had the worst sleep ever, woke up on Monday and I was feeling under the weather. And then of course, when I said I was going to try and record tonight, I have been, um, quite sick today. So I'm trying to... <sighs> not let that show as much as possible. Um, but yes, I just needed to get this video done and up because uh, I keep putting it off waiting. I got hit with a blizzard the one weekend I had planned to go to the fabric store and our um, the fabric store I go to is only open on Saturdays, not Sundays. So Saturday was blizzard day. Sunday, even if I wanted to and they were open, I wouldn't have been able to get there because it, the roads hadn't been cleared or anything. So um, yeah, we got hit with that. And now this week, it's like everything is melting and you can see grass in places. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah, life updates. Other than that, I had um, my best friend come for a visit um, last week. So that was really fun. She came with her two boys and, um, yeah, we had a great time. And then, um, not a lot. I've been trying to work and get things done. Um, the usual hanging out with the kids, taking care of them full time, um, <laughs> getting family time in on the weekends. And yeah, my, um, little guy had his year and a half 18 month checkup. So we had to go do that. And yeah, just the usual stuff. So <laughs> um, anyways, I'm here to do the second recording of this. I'm hoping, you know what, in all honesty, on Sunday, when I did it, I kind of felt scattered. And um, obviously, it was because I was under the weather and I was getting hit with something and I didn't know it. Um, but I did feel a little scattered and a little uh rambly. I think I'm not doing any better so far. <laughs> I also felt like I apologized a lot. So I did have somebody tell me in one of my videos to just not say sorry as much. Um, but if you are unfamiliar, I am Canadian and apparently that's all we do. We're known for it as we say sorry all the time. I guess I come by it naturally. Um, I will try to not apologize uh, for all my learning I still have to do when it comes to making videos like this. So floss tube number three we've got today. I've got my spring collection um, designs to show you, my little smalls. There is a collection one, two, and three that I released um, just to get, do some little smalls for spring. I needed the idea behind it was I really wanted some smaller designs for dough bowls, pillows. Um, and then when I did the first collection, I did like a little sign display. I really liked how it turned out. 
I uh, was so tempted to go in other directions with the other ones, but when I put up a poll on my Instagram, you guys voted for pillows, and I'm so glad you did because they turned out so adorable, and I'm so happy with them. It was my first time doing little pillows, so for my first time, I couldn't be more thrilled with how they turned out, and yeah, I'm super excited to share those with you. And then I have some of my tiered trade designs. Um, if you're familiar with my market releases, I had two tiered tr trays released um, for market. And then just recently I did the B tier tray. So I have that today to finish. And then I've got some haul for you guys. Um, yeah. So let's get started. I think I said it already, but my last video turned out to be quite long. I'm hoping that this time around, I'll be a little bit more smooth sailing and get this out a lot quicker than I did the first time. So I, in all honesty, I was thinking like, can I push doing this a little bit longer? No, I know you guys are waiting for it. I want to get it done. I don't know how much sicker I'm going to get. I feel like this is just the start of it. Um, I want to get it out and in all honesty, I need the space back. So I have to say anybody who's out there doing floss tube videos, I appreciate you so much. I have since day one of watching floss tube. Um, but now doing them myself, I appreciate you so much more because the amount of work that goes into these things, it's a lot. So it's the setup, tear down, pack away, clean up, organize, prepare what you're going to kind of say. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into it. So thank you for everyone who's out there doing them. Um, I love seeing what everybody does, all your knowledge that you guys have and your finishes. It's, it's the coolest thing. I'm still... <laughs> I'm, even though I'm here on floss tube now, I'm still current, like, I think I'll always be just blown away by the floss tube community and everything that you guys put out there for all of us to enjoy. So thank you. All right. So let's get started first off with, um, my spring collection number one. So this was the bunny bait. These ones are part of a two pack pattern set so there was bunny bait and um 25 cent carrots in this one so for this one i chose to do like a garden steak finish um i wanted these designs to be kind of eastery but kind of could fall longer into spring and stuff this one i would say is a little bit more on the eastery side you've got a little bunny in there bunny bait but it still could be left out longer past Easter without being um, total Easter overkill for after the season has passed. So I did this one. I um, finished it onto some sticky board, layered it with a, another board behind and just a simple polka dot on there. And then some of the burlap rickrack that I found at the dollar store. The steak is one of the ones I had showed you guys in my last video. Um, these were garden steaks that I found at the dollar store, Dollarama, and, um, they were in the gardening aisle. I mentioned it would be cute to paint them all white and do a picket fence display. Um, but I just painted that one white and attached that to there just with some hot glue onto the back of the board. And then I did put a piece of felt just on the back to kind of make it a little tidier. Um, but yeah, that's super quick and easy. Um, I mean, other than a little chunk of fabric and a little square felt, like so inexpensive finishing for that one. Really, I mean, you get the pack of these were like a dollar fifty, and then <laughs> trim is all from the dollar store, like I said, and it was just a quick, easy, fun display. And I wanted to put that in my jar of carrots. So these carrots are the ones I showed you guys um, on my last video as well. They were garland and I had just gone through and snipped them off of the garland and put them all in the jar and thought, how cute is that? Little bunny bait. There they are, the little carrots for the bunnies. So 
And then for my display, I found one of these at the dollar store too, painted it up. This was part of the dollar store pack carrots, wooden carrots that I got um, and showed you on one of my last videos. I painted the top part green. I added some layered felt there just for interest and painted that orange. I put some um, thread around it just for fun to add some more texture to it and then uh, put a magnet on there so that I can put that on there. I don't have to keep this just um, straight all the time. Uh, I guess I'm still not good with words in this one. <laughs> okay, I did the magnet so that for the different seasons and stuff as I change my um, stitches, I can change this in and out. This doesn't have to be just for Easter. It can be for any time of the year. And then I put just put that in there as a cute little display. I had this as well that I found at the dollar store. Showed you guys previous, so I kind of had that layered in there too. Which you'll see in photos on any of my social platforms, Facebook I, um, or Instagram. So that was that one. Um, and then this was the number two the second pattern that is part of that collection. So carrots, 25 cents. I just love that little gingham carrot. And then the striped ones along the bottom there in the dirt, so cute. Again, this you can leave out, honestly, this you could have out all year if you wanted. It could fit nicely in with home, de um, not home decor, oh my goodness. <laughs> Farmhouse decor. <laughs> so, Super cute. Just did that on sticky board and then um, the burlap rick rack. Oh my goodness. I hope this comes out okay, you guys. I apologize. If I don't get it done today, I just don't know when. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the rick rack. I almost said the gingham. Um, the rick rack, burlap rick rack around the back. And then this is just a little bag I just quickly stitched up. So it's nothing fancy. I just took some canvasy material, made this little like, kind of like a bucket bag. And then um, I put the ribbon and twine and the bunny around the top there. It is on a Velcro, so I can take that off as well. And then if I want to reuse this later or if I want to keep it up longer, I can get rid of the bunny if it feels too Eastery for me still. And then the carrots, I just made them. I've been seeing the cute carrots everywhere shopping. And I, when I saw them in stores, I just kind of was like, wow, I could, I mean, like those would be so easy to make and so quick, such a fun project. They are super quick and easy to make. I should have just bought some probably because like ugh, time, right? But they were quick and fun and I wish I had more fabrics that would have worked for like Easter um, or carrot tones and stuff. But um, I just did the three up. It was a lot of fun. This was the first one I did and I think it shows, but that's okay. It's, they all have their own little unique character. Um, so I just cut two triangles, long and skinny, kind of the shape of the carrot that I wanted and um, sewed straight simple line on either side. I didn't finish the top proper. I just folded it over and then um, zipped up the sides, stuffed, well, turned it inside out, of course, stuffed some batting in there, uh, made my carrot top. And then um, this one, once I, I just cut into the felt and made like lots of little cuts, rolled it, glued it with the glue, hot glue, put it in the center with some hot glue. And then, um, this one I did try to just sort of stitch through the top and like pull it shut. Um, the next one I just wrapped around the out edges with twine and I found that to be a lot easier. It just looks nicer too. So, um, I'm sure you could sew that one better shut too if you um, want to spend more time on it. Yes, but I just 
took this, put it in, and then wrapped the twine around and uh, used a little bit of hot glue to kind of close and this up. one. I put the t little pieces of twine in there, um, and that was just honestly the twine that I cut off the other carrots. The garland was um, this twine, and I just had snipped those off already so I just put them in there and I love that it looks just gives it some extra fun texture um this one was just some felt did it in the same way and then um on these before I sewed them together I took some thread and just kind of like wove it in and out and created that line on there and that just kind of gives it that texture of a carrot and that would be super fun to do in any color um contrasting orange or whatever you'd want to do you could do some purple carrots that would be super fun um and then just fold it over some gingham ribbon and tucked it in there same thing wrap some twine around glued it down with um, some hot glue so those are super quick and easy to do it would be so fun to do in lots of different um fabrics and then i just put them in my little basket <laughs> after I shoved some um, felt in there to kind of fill the basket. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Yes. And then after that, I was at Michael's because our Michael's um, is open again. If you didn't watch my other videos yet, um, I had mentioned that our Michaels burnt, uh, or didn't burn down. Oh my goodness. They had a fire. It was, from my understanding, it was pretty minor, but the sprinklers all kicked on. So somebody was able to put the fire out with the fire extinguisher. Nobody was hurt, but the sprinklers all kicked on as a result. So the whole store was ruined because of that. Um, and that happened back in November, early November. And they just opened up um, last weekend. So I finally got to go in and do some shopping, um, which was super exciting. And I knew this would happen. The whole store was beautifully stocked, full. I wish it was like that always. Um, it was so full and beautiful and full of Eastern spring all up front, right? And you know how stores are always so far ahead. Um, so of course, when they opened, everything was on sale, 50% off for all spring and um, Easter stuff. So I was just, yay, okay, time to do some shopping. I did pretty good, all things considered, to be completely honest. So I did find this, and if you're, again, on my socials, you would have seen I shared this there already. Um, but this is so cute for displays, lots of different displays you could do in this, but this would have just been perfect. You just put some straw or grass in there. Um, or a big bunch of felt to just kind of punch it up. But you could put your carrots in there and then, um, you know, have a little sign coming out of it or do a little pillow for in it too. This on the front of this would be, I do just have this Velcroed on there. So, um, but yeah, you could put that on there do a nice little ribbon around it if you wanted but super cute this would have looked great for even for um the other two co collections that I still have to show you would be super cute I've got the um fresh flowers which would look great just fill this with flowers your little pillow um any kind of easter decor you'd want you can do the farm fresh eggs in this, fill it full of eggs, do your signs in, little pillows or a sign sticking out, a little face pillow on the front. Super cute. Lots of possibilities with that. Oh, and I did have other people asking. Um, but yes, I that is the sticker. I hope I hope that's showing okay. 
these ticket information in case you're looking for that. That was $19.99 here in Canada, so 50% off, $10, $10. Like, you can't go wrong for that. So that was um, something I was pretty excited about. Okay, let me just tidy that away. Okay. And then I did um, this as well for a little um, extra piece to go with my carrots and Easter decor. I just thought this was such a fun idea. So it is, um, this is just one of the little boxes from Michael's that you find like in the checkout stand. Um, I think like the aisles, like the little baskets, just as you're going through, um, the register. Anyways, they're like a dollar fifty or something. You can find similar things at the dollar store. Um, I just painted the back, stained the outside, put some hot glue down and just put the ribbon back and forth, make kind of a carrot shape. I did go a little like too big probably and too tall there that I just have a little spigot at the top for my carrot stem. So um, but I still like it. It's still super cute. Next time I'd probably give it a little bit more space just so I could have a little bit more of a fluff to the top. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just a fun little project I thought I'd share with you guys for something fun, quick and easy to do. Um, yeah, super cheap and inexpensive too to add to your decor and you can match your ribbon that you're using. Um, if you had like gingham or anything, like any kind of ribbon that you're using on your projects, you could match it to that and it would be a fun little way to tie it all together. Okay, so number two, spring collection number two was the hop and fresh flowers. So I, like I said, you guys voted um, little pillows for these finishes and that is what I did. I finally got to the fabric store <laughs> These I would have loved to have had finished a little sooner, but um, I can only do what I can do, right? And I can't control the weather, unfortunately, as much as I wish I could. So these, I when I went to the fabric store, was looking for something floral or Eastery that kind of would match the colors. And right when I came in the store, there was this beautiful display Kimberbell Designs, um, the Vintage Flora line right there. And I, I could not believe how close the colors matched. And as I was looking at it, I was like, well, I just got in here. I should probably look around. I, I went and I looked through everything and kind of was searching. And I was, I went at the end of it, ended up right back where I started. So, um, I was debating between getting the five inch squares and the larger squares. And I kind of, when I was looking at the five inch, I was like, you know, I think that would be a good, um, pillow size. It would give me enough to put a little bit of something on the front and then use a five inch for the back. Um, I sh I should have got the bigger size probably cause I love the fabric and I want to use it for something. Um, but I, did end up with a five inch, um, just cause I was trying to keep my budget down. So, um, I got the little package of all of them and like, I have them here to show you guys too, cause they're just like the most beautiful fabrics. So that was the vintage flora pack, um, fabrics. And I, they've got like tons of florals. This is going to be, see, so yeah, this is my second time doing this and it's, um, no less awkward. <laughs> Uh, polka dots, super cute, lots of different. So I think I'm going to try and piece these all together. I think my camera's blowing out the light tonight. I'm going to try and put these all together and make a project bag, I think. Oh, this one's so cute. It goes really nice with the Farm Fresh Eggs collection too, with all the blues in here. Okay. Anyways, you guys get the idea, right? So many beautiful colors. And then it's got the yellows in it. These are the ones that 
I had showed on my Instagram. These would just all be perfect for the bees. I didn't actually even see this one in the yellow until I got home with the package. Um, but so cute. This is the fabric I ended up choosing to go with my bee design. So I'll show you guys that later. It's got the bright pinks in there. So many. More florals. More bright pink. More florals. Yeah. So pretty though. And that green that's in there and the pink, like that's the pink and green. It just matches the colors of that stitch so perfectly. This little button too, it looks like a little egg. Since I had to put that on there. And then, yeah, again, the green and the pink, just the perfect colors. And then that button I just happened to have on hand. Color matches perfectly. And then this is just a little wood charm from the dollar store. Painted it white, stitched it on there. Um, yeah. And then for this, when I was making these, um, I wanted to make sure, because these are pretty squared out patterns. Like there's a, you know, definite, like there's the line straight across the bottom. And then everything kind of is within the box frame. So I wanted to make sure that I had everything nice and straight on top there. So what I did was I just fold it over, like fold over what you want for your seam allowance. And then I pressed it. And then I just took that and pinned it directly on top of, I guess I can just use another one of these, directly on top of like my stitch and lined it up where I needed it to be and then pinned it in place, sewed it on top, did a top stitch down, um, made sure it was nice and straight a couple times, you know, if you need to. The nice thing with sewing is nothing is permanent. You can take out that stitch and do it again if you need to. And then, yeah, again, I just did the same thing. So I did attach that one first and then I put this one across and attach that and then that way I made sure everything was nice and clean and squared up and then once I had that sewn together I just put that sandwiched it with my um five inch square on top and then I trimmed around with the size I would need for my front piece I did do the back with a hole in them where you've got the hole and then shove the batting in through there, the fill. And um, so I, before I put that, sewed that together, I snipped that and then um, sewed those two together. And then from there, you know, to just get your pillow, four straight lines, that's all you gotta do. And if it's not straight the first time, you just take out your seam and go for it again. So. I, I did see somebody too who had asked for like a tutorial on um, the pillows and being like scared of your sewing machine. Um, I, I am not um, the expert when it comes to sewing. I can sew, I love to sew. Um, there's so many amazing tutorials out there already. So I would suggest if you're looking for tutorials, just punch it into YouTube and a bunch will come up. Um, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch has great tutorials. Um, Nicole Spore does a lot of her finishing tutorials as well. And like I say with sewing, it's, I find relatively easy because you can always undo it. Whereas like when you're gluing things and stuff, you can't, right? So you can do um, your straight seam and if it's not good just go back and do it again um yes I so many amazing tutorials out there I've watched a few myself too and like I say they they are the experts when it comes to that so I will let them continue to do it I'm not saying I'll never do tutorials I'm thinking going forward like when I'm doing a finish if I can take some um, little snidbits along the way and put it together for a little 
reel or a video or something for you guys to show you the different steps. I will try and do that because I'm already doing the process of like making these. Um, but as of right now, um, I'm still trying to get myself organized enough just with the things I've got going on. So I won't be doing any like official tutorials right yet. But I, I like the idea of doing like a little reel or something, a snapshot of the finishing process and different things that I, um, the different ways that I am doing it. Okay, so I, like I said, I did the little hole in the back and then I just made a little square, top stitched it and then put that on with some little buttons. So, but look at those fabrics, like, again, they're just... Oh yeah, look at the floral. I just love it. See my, there we go. My camera is just blowing out the light tonight. Um, yeah. I just put polyfill in them. What else do I need to tell you? Oh my goodness, see this is, these ones I stitched on 14 count Ada Vintage Country Mocha. And that's, I did collection one, two, and three, all on the same fabric. I always forget to mention that stuff. So if I ever forget, you guys, please just, and you want to know, just send me a message in the comments, find me on social media, wherever, and I will let you know anything that you want to know about them. I'm still feeling scattered. So, <laughs> but we're going to keep pushing through and just get this out there for you guys because I know you want it and I want to give you all the information on these so this is Cottontail Farms this is collection number three these ones I decided to do in a long skinny um pillow form and I did the same top stitch onto the fabric so that I made sure everything was nice and lined up there and then I just did a little piece of rickrack in between the two different um, styles of fabric there. And again, is that light? I think it's blowing it out again. Anyways, this fabric here has the, it's the same as that yellow one I showed you that's got um, florals, the same as the back as, of this one. But it's a white and gray. So it's got the floral print on it. It's really pretty and then this is the second one of that collection so that's farm fresh eggs I gotta figure out better lighting I'm just in my unfinished basement so the lighting down here is not great anyways but I will work on that for you guys um this is this is that um, hexagon pattern that I said would be super cute for the bees because it kind of looks like honeycomb, but it also to me reminds me of chicken wire. So I went with that one for this. And then same idea, put some twine around there, some buttons, super cute. And then I did a check on the back. Now with these ones, I did like two top seam folds. like this and this and then I put them together and then when I sewed around this was still left as a opening to put my batting in my fill and um I liked that that was way easier to get the batting in the um polyfill I used polyfill for all of these it was way easier to get in um than the other the little hole I kind of found, and even turning these in it, in and out through that little hole was um, a bit of a challenge for me. So I liked this better, but then when it came to closing it, I kind of looked at the first one and I was like, oh yeah, that would be so easy. Just put some hot glue along there and just sort of like pull it tight and close it. It was not. The fill was um, giving me trouble. It was giving me pushback. <laughs> so I did not have the easiest of times with that. Um, but on the second one, I just got the needle and thread out and sewed it shut much better. And then that one, I just have a 
little button, an old little button, and the wood charm as another one of those ones from the dollar store as well. So that was collection number three. I just love how these came out. I um, wanted them to be nice and tight around the designs too. So I did pretty close margin on them. But yeah, super cute. I had these in my pictures, both of the pillows I did on tier trays. Um, but this would be super cute in a bowl full of eggs. Uh, again, this is, could be, these could be left out longer than summer. This could just stay with farmhouse decor. Um, both of them could. So little bunny, super cute cottontail farms and that flower. I wanted a flower sort of design there to kind of mimic like a, an, like an old, um, floral print that you would find like on a bed sheet or something that old just simple floral print so super cute I love how all these designs came out they were super fun to create and you guys have been loving them too and I've loved seeing all your finishes so thank you for sharing those always because so I forgot to show this is that um, little wagon that I found at the dollar store in the gardening aisle Dollarama and I just I came down here to do my floss tube and saw it and I was like oh I should have been using that for my displays I got it with that in mind so um but again super cute I just threw, threw those in there now but this would be really cute if you filled it with some Easter stuff and maybe I will still do that and then put a photo up and then put your little pillows in it or again, you could put your carrots in there and you could have your little carrots on there. Um, you could do it with this also, these, look at that little pillow in there. And then put some eggs in with it. Super cute, sits up all on its own in there. So cute, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Lots of possibilities, okay. I think I'm just as long on my video probably here as the first one. So, sorry, I said it. <laughs> and you know, I wanted to say it again there. I wanted to say it for saying it. Okay, moving on. So, Market. I had my nautical tear tray at Market. It was a Market release. And... um. I wanted to share that one with you guys today, how I chose to finish mine. Um, I have to say, you guys, market was amazing. For my first market, I did not go to market. My stuff was at market for the first time. So my stuff was there with Dinky Dyes. Um, and you guys are all so sweet and amazing. You've blown me away with all the love and support. And I, I've had the last couple of weeks, um, this last week in particular, I've really just been sitting in all the emotions of it because I've been overwhelmed with like joy and love, um, seeing everybody get their patterns and now how quick you guys are to start stitching them and sharing that with me. That has been absolutely just ugh, I don't even it's so hard for me to even put my words together for it because it's just I've had a few moments and times where I'm just sitting there and crying because I'm overwhelmed with how how much you guys love it for me to put so much of myself into a design and create something that I love and adore um but then to see how excited you guys get about getting it and then you can't wait to start stitching it. It's just, it's the coolest process to be able to create my art and put it into a form that you guys are able to bring to life. And then you find that spot in your home to cherish it. And I know how much work and energy goes into stitching. And it's just the fact that you want to spend your time and energy stitching my creations is just amazing. It's, it's still mind blowing to me. 
And I don't think it'll ever get old seeing, seeing you guys create beautiful things out of it. And I just have to say thank you for your support and thank you for sharing because it, every time I open um, my social and I see like Instagram tag or Facebook um, sharing of your photos, it's just amazing. It really is. So thank you for everything, for every like, comment, share, um, tagging me. It's, it's all so amazing. I cannot, I would not be here without you guys. So thank you, um, for being so warm and welcoming and just the support is amazing. I, I'm truly grateful. So, um, this was the market, uh, tear tray nautical one. I had two. So there was the spring tear tray and then nautical. So this is how I chose to finish it. I shared this frame with you guys last week. I sure hope my lighting works because I don't know why it's goofy tonight. Maybe it's just me and the cold medicine. <laughs> oh dear. Um, it didn't look goofy yesterday, so I'm hoping it's just the way I'm seeing it. But this is my nautical tear tray. And it is on this frame that I shared with you guys from, I can never tell if it's straight. And then sometimes I look in the camera and it doesn't look straight. Okay. The frame is the one I shared from, from the dollar store, Dollarama with you guys on my last video. It has that beautiful texture to it. so pretty. I just love how this one came together. So I stitched the, <laughs> I stitched my tear trays on, um, 32 count charcoal Lugana. I finished it on the sticky board. I put some of that large white rickrack around the back and then two layers of fabric both of these I found on sale at my fabric store and I just, I love these colors. I am obsessed with how this one turned out. And then the two, I did a couple of um, bows there and a covered button. I found some proper cover buttons, which I'll talk to you guys about in haul. Um, and then a little anchor charm. That's one of those little wood anchor, um, wood charms that are from the dollar store as well. So that is the nautical tear tray and I absolutely adore it. I am so, I said it in one of my posts that I think this would be such a beautiful stitch to go with um, all of the 4th of July stitches you guys have, all my American friends, um, because of the colors in it. And I mean, the stripes, in there too and the stars it's just it's a fun play on like a july 4th without being completely july 4th um yeah i just love it and for all my canadian friends it's also wonderful especially if you're a west or east coaster um and then anybody who has a beach home or just loves the beach because i know i do this one, I said it as well in one of my posts that it's near and dear to my heart because I did live on the West Coast um, in Vancouver and Va Vancouver Island for quite some time. Um, and when I sh shared this one, when I finished it all up and shared that with my husband, he just said, wow, that's, that's beautiful. And I think it's too, like, because we are so... Um, in love with the ocean and the West Coast. <laughs> um, I'm sure we'd love the East Coast too. We've got it on our bucket list is one of the places, that's probably one of the top places we want to go is out East in Canada here. I've been to Prince Edward Island once in my life, um, but the true East Coast, we want to go. Anyways, we love the West Coast because we, that's where we met. That's where we got engaged. We got engaged in Tofino on the island. Um, we got married there. <laughs> so it is near and dear to our hearts. And that this design just speaks to 
that. Yes. So I absolutely love how it came out. And it, it, I wanted to say too, with this one, it's reminding me of all the vibes of that quilting book that everybody is sharing right now. Um, the Americana, <laughs> um, the quilting book was, I just watched somebody today. Oh, Elizabeth Ann Ken Stitch had it in her video too. I think it's called Summer Memories. Anyways, there's a quilting book that everybody is sharing right now that is all the blues and reds and it's a lot of American quilts. And I said, I want it. I realize I'm Canadian. Um, but I'm thinking maybe I can make a nautical quilt one day that has all these colors in it. Um, I think I said in my first recording that I could make one for my mom because she was born in America. I don't have time. Let's face it. I don't have time. But I love these colors and I want to do some more. Maybe I can make a little table runner or something to go with this collection. <laughs> That's nautical theme. <laughs> Anyways, these are... I just adore the little tear trays. I'm, I've am i said it in one of my videos before that I just love seeing how small of a motif you can make um, of something and make it still look like that thing it's supposed to be. But you only get so many little stitches to make it, right? I think it's so fun. And I just, I love the size of these. They, I find them to be such a quick and easy stitch. Um, yeah. And it's super fun and satisfying because you're doing little motif at a time. And on that note, here is the other one. The B tier tray. I really don't feel like I have my best foot forward in this video today. But I can just say it'll get better when I'm not under the weather. So... Here is the B tier tray. And this one I chose to display on this cute little board. It is, it's not fancy on the back because at uh, time, uh, I just painted the front of it. And um, it's always going to be leaning up against something or hanging. It's got a little hanger on there. This is just a cheap board from the dollar store. I think Dollarama it was. Probably only $1.50, $2 maybe, who knows, somewhere in there. I don't have the tag on the back, which is quite unusual for me. I usually just leave them on there, um, especially now because I want to be able to tell you guys. But it is from Dollarama, this one, um, in their crafting wood stuff. And I did these magnetics so that I can interchange them. And I've told you guys that this is, you're all asking, this is just the start of the tier trays. There will be many more to come. Um, I, yes. So that is the B tier tray. I did the twine on the top. I hot glued that on and then this is magnetic. So I can interchange that as well. And I just had those um, little wood tiles from the dollar store. I covered one in fabric to match the backing fabric I chose here and then left the other one raw wood. The bumblebee is a button and that's another one of those wood charms that I painted white and just stuck it on the flower. Did a couple bows. I get my ribbons and stuff there from the dollar store too. Every once in a while I'll pick one up from Michael's. Now that my store is back and running I'm sure I'll be getting more from there that are like specialty that match specifically what I'm looking for. So, um, yes. And then that fabric is this one from the Kimber Bell, um, flora collection. I just thought it was so perfect because of the little flowers in there. And then it's got that like whimsical, um, swirly vines and leaves and stuff. And I just thought that kind of mimicked the little flying trails of the bees. So that is B tier. Isn't it just so, I love it. Ah, I just love how that one came out. So cute. It's 
So there you go. And I did say these are interchangeable. Um, so we can, because I plan on having lots of like, you know, different seasonal ones. So um, there is a summer one. There'll be a summer one, a fall one, all sorts. I've got Halloween one that's it changed out onto that one super cute very beachy with the wood love it and then again this is I hope it's we'll see it every time yeah <laughs> okay well you get the idea I can't quite get the straight. <laughs> I have to cut my tails a little shorter if I want it on there, maybe. Or just put it straighter. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> so interchangeable. Um, I like the being able to do that. And then if you want to finish it in a different way, find something um, better later, you can just take it all off and use that for something else. Um, I did take the glass out of here and then I just put a couple layers of cardboard on there, um, glued them all together and then put my magnets on top because it is a little indented there. So just to like raise it up so that it would actually connect to with my project. So that is the tear trays, nautical and B. Super, super happy with how those came out. Um, yeah. And then we've got haul. That's it for my stitching. So I don't have, I say I don't have a ton, but I do. I have a few things from the dollar store to share with you guys. Just little, this is Dollarama. It's just a little box. Could stain it or paint it, um, but I thought that would be great. Again, you could put flowers in there. You could use it for your carrots, um, and it is a $4 option. So nice and cheap and affordable, but you can still do a lot with it. So paint, stain, fill it with whatever you want. Um, you can put a big finish on the front, small one, whatever you'd like. So just, I thought that was a nice, a pretty decent size box to give possibilities to do a lot with. Okay. And then I picked up a couple of these. They're just the shadow style frame. Oh yeah. They still have their wrap on them. <laughs> so they're just the shadow. So they've got the deep I like them like that so that when you get your layers of um, on your project, if you've got a couple layers of fabric and stuff, it gives you room to kind of still be within the frame instead of sticking out. So I got two of those, the blonde wood and the black. They're not real wood. They're just like that plastic wood wrap. So hard to find real wood nowadays, and you're definitely not going to get it from the dollar store. <laughs> But it works for um, an inexpensive, quick and easy finish. So I'm here for it. Okay, and then I went, when I did finally get out shopping, I bought a bunch of fabric because I want to make fabric bags. Not fabric bags. Oh my goodness. I guess that's fair. They are made of fabric. I want to make project bags. I know. With all my time, right? Um, but I did watch... A tutorial on them and I was like I think I could do that pretty quick and easy we're gonna see I'll get back to you on my next video well that's committing myself to actually getting something sewn and I'll get back to you on it hopefully in the next video or so. So I got these three sewing related fabrics. This one is just so cute. Love it. I got a couple ones from the sale section. Just thought those were nice and springy. Um, 
this one, which if you guys have seen some of my designs coming out, this just needs to be a bag for all those projects. Love it. And that one to go with, and this one as well. So I plan on using that for project bags. We will see. I got um, some rickrack large. Um, this was from that hot glue everywhere. Um, Fabric Land. They sell it by the meter here in Canada. I don't know if Fabric Land, I feel like it would be. I'm not sure. Is it a Canadian store, American too? Um, some more with rack impacts, smaller stuff. Oh, yes. The B buttons were also from Fa Fabric Land. So, a little pack of those, which will be great because got more B projects coming. Got this from Michaels. I got a lot of stuff from Michaels. Um, a lot of the things on my tier trays for the Easter collections was there. Those little plants that they have, they're just so cute for a little tier tray. Um, and then they had a couple of little pedestals and stuff. The eggs, they were all from Michaels. Um, the green little grass bunny was Michaels. And they were all 50% off. So that was really awesome. This was also from there. And I thought that would be really cute for um, B displays, the hexagon, you know, it looks kind of like your honeycomb style. And then this, that would be cute on a tiered tray. Put that on the top tier and it have it coming down. Be fun. So I bought that. Mm. Strawberries, because if you have seen, well, I now have two strawberry patterns available. There are some more coming. Um, I did share a sneak peek today on my Instagram again, um, but these are absolutely perfect. I was shocked. Um, they had the lemons that I had with my other um, lemon display and I found strawberries when I was in there shopping. So I was so excited, got those 50% off for those. And then this, which I didn't realize Michaels even did this. So this is just a trim bundle. There's 50 pieces in this bundle. And it is $12.99 Canadian. And that was 50% off. So $6.50. Like, look at all that trim. There's like beautiful laces in there. And some little pom pom -y ones. And just like all sorts of different so cool so i'm gonna have to keep an eye out for that and see if that's like a regular thing that they do with all the different seasons or they i bet you anything they probably even have these like basic regular bundles i've just never seen them before probably because i was never looking for them but now i need all the trim i can get so that as well and then the last bit of haul that i have is some fabric and I thought I would just kind of go through the ones that I got um, with this last order. I just got a bunch of the pre-cuts. I think most of them were already pre-cuts um, because I just wanted to get some different colors on hand and maybe get some stuff that I wouldn't normally buy. Um, but so then I can see it too and have it um, depending what designs I'm putting out. Uh, it's always nice to have a good selection of colors to see what works with what. So I will go through them really quickly, um, hopefully really quickly. <laughs> I'm at an hour mark already. I told you last time was hour 25. I was hoping I could get this under an hour and I have not done any better and I feel just as scattered. So, um, but that's okay. We're here and we're getting it out to you guys. I will go through them and I am... Um, yeah, I'll just share you kind of like what I think of the colors and hopefully it'll help somebody, especially if you're trying to online shop because I don't get to go and see this in front of me anywhere. I have to shop with a little thumbnail on and generally I'm on my phone doing it so it's even smaller, but, um, I some of the colors I am not as familiar with. So I just 
wanted to get a bunch of different stuff and see. Um, I know that it's hard, especially in Canada, for a lot of people to get supplies locally. So a lot of our shopping is online. Um, if anybody has any like recommendations for places that you love to shop in Canada or that ships to Canada, that's not um, outrageous shipping, let me know. Um, the, oh, that's the one thing I was going to ask you guys. And they're here. They're just hiding under all my, the covered buttons. So I did find them. Remember on my last video, I was talking about how I just took the little wood, um, medallion and glued some fabric over it. Kind of like I did here. I glued the fab. Oh, wow. See that light. Okay. I glued the fabric over that little guy. And on the other ones, I tried to mimic a covered button. So I like shoved some batting in there to like puff it out. It worked pretty good. Um, it worked great, but it was like a sloppy back. And after using one of these, these are so quick and easy to do. Um, I was blown away. So I... Nicole Spore has a button tutorial. She did little cross stitches motifs and does the covered buttons. Go watch that because she's an expert at it. Um, her videos are great. She does a, a fabulous job. So um, she inspired me to do the covered buttons and I did finally find them on Amazon. I got 10 in here and you know, I should have looked this up because I didn't for my last video and here I am still forgot to look it up. I either paid 10 or $15 for 10 of these. And you get the little thing that pushes it in. When Nicole did hers, she had a little tracing template for what size to cut the fabric. I This did not come with that. So I kind of just like put the fabric in there with the, the button top and then trimmed around. <laughs> Anyways, I made it work. But I feel like, regardless, 10 for $10 or 10 for 15 there's got to be maybe a better deal out there or somewhere else to buy them. I am curious. If anybody has any pointers, heads up, where to get them, what do you think of the pricing? I don't know. It's either 10 for 10 or 10 for 15 I guess it's not terrible. They're amazing. They add a super personal little touch to your um projects I love it that was I don't even know if I mentioned that but I think I did that's a covered button and I just used the fabric that I um did on this board here on there and it's just like super cute ties it all together so and I love the idea of stitching the little motifs for the covered buttons so cute because then you can just tie it right back into the design so I do love that um but yes if you have anywhere that you love to shop project bags fabric um notions finishing supplies in Canada or that ships to Canada for a reasonable amount um let me know thank you <laughs> and I would I would like to try and compile some some sort of like shopping in Canada, or maybe there's already one out there for us cross stitchers. Um, okay, so first off, uh, let's, I guess I was comparing those before I even shared them to you. Okay, so this is Ice Blue. These are all Zweigart fabrics. This is 14 count Ada. So when I was doing my video the other night, it worked best to kind of like tip it, um, but my light's being goofy tonight, so we'll see. This is a very nice soft blue. It's very cool. It's kind of like the same tone as like a baby blue, I'd say, but it's a little bit lighter. So very soft and subtle. And then this is a vintage blue. Mm-hmm. It's got some marbling in there. Um, I would say the background of this one is quite purpley and then the marbling is kind of like more of a royal blue tone, but that is like, look at the difference between the two. This is very nice. Um, this would be gorgeous for some winter stitches. 
They both would be actually. So those will probably go in the pile for some Christmas stuff. This is sage green. This is a 32 count um, Lugana. Again, Swigart um, sage green. And this to me is more, it's more vibrant of a green. I was expecting sage. To me, sage is a very like a dusty muted color. Um, really kind of like that frosted green. It probably makes, um, but this is just like really, really green to me. So it's very beautiful color. Um, but if I was looking for a sage green, I wouldn't. I don't know that I'd call that sage, in my opinion. So, um, and then we have 32 count Lugana in the lilac. So I usually stitch on, this is, oh there, that kind of looked like the more true color. Anyways, this is a very, very pretty color. It's soft, it's definitely more of like a reddy pink purple. Um, you could totally pull it off as more of a neutral though, I believe. Like it's cause it's so soft of a color. It'd be really pretty. Um, and then we've got, yeah, so I usually stitch on 14 count Ada. I like doing, um, the 14 count Ada for my model stitching. Sometimes I do like my tear trace. I did on a 32 count Lugana. Um, I usually do 28 or 32 and I personally just like a two thread stitch. I like the loop method and, um, I do linen sometimes, but generally for my model stitching, I stick with the Adas and I kind of go into the Luganas too, because I, I do like stitching on a Lugana that smooth, um, finish of it. And it's just, to me, it's a stiffer than a linen, um, like thicker, sturdier fabric than a linen. And um, it just, I like the evenness of it too. So um, Fat Quarter Shop does have some great videos for the, between Ada, Lugana, and linen to kind of explain all the different fabrics and um, the differences between counts and all that kind of lovely stuff. So they've got some great information there. This is um, a 14 count Ada. It is um, bow peep pink and it's very soft. It's kind of true to that like baby pink tone, but it's um, very soft. It's not too pinky either, which like not very bright is I guess what I'm trying to say, but it's a very, very pretty soft and subtle pink. Um, then we've got more 14 count Ada. I've got a pewter gray which is a bluey gray. It's very beautiful, um, cooler gray. And then this is the mystic gray. So this is a really pretty green, like it's kind of got a greeny tone to it. So it's probably hard to see here, but next to each other, yeah. You can see this is more of a green and this is more of like that blue. So this is pewter and this one is mystic gray. And, um, I'm doing my strawberries right now that I'm stitching, the new ones that are coming um, on this one. But the lemons would be pretty on this one too. So very, very pretty. Um, this is Vintage Smoky White Ada, 14 count. Um, sorry, it is a very creamy, um, background kind of color, a little off-white, I would say. And then the smoke on it the, is like a marbling of the smoky color. And that's sort of like a brownie gray, a browned out or a grayed out brown. Yeah, I think it's showing pretty okay, considering they're in their bags. And I'm sorry I didn't take them out, but I know if I would have taken them out, all my tags and everything would get jumbled and I, I just have to leave it together so I know what I'm using so I can tell you guys later when I stitch on them what everything is because sometimes I think I know what it is but they so some of them get so close and depending what um, light you're in 
but that is beautiful. This would be a great one for anything vintage. Um, anything you want to have that like kind of like dirty. I was thinking like some of the gardening stuff would look really cool on that because it's got kind of got like that dirty weathered look. So I love that. I'm going to have to think of a perfect project for it. I've never used that one before, to be honest. Um, and this is oatmeal. This is um, got the different texture to it. So that's really, I love that. I love when it's got a little bit more of a um, variegation to the fabrics. So this is a bit of a lighter tone. So I think you might have to watch your whites and stuff on this because it's just not quite, I don't think, quite dark enough. And I know that from <laughs> experience. This is sand, 14 count Ada sand. Oh, this, this is a little bit, this is more of a yellowy tone to it. Um, They're pretty close for like lightness factor. I had troubles with white on this one. So um, even when you do floss toss, and it doesn't matter how many times you know, always do a test stitch if you ever kind of like, mm, I've done my floss toss a couple times and thought, oh, that'll be great. And then you go and stitch it. Should have done that stitch. <laughs> Should have done the stitch. Okay. Vintage Country Mocha, a go-to favorite. This is like, you cannot go wrong with this fabric, in my opinion. I love it. I've always, the, anything like burlap, I'm there for it. And this, to me, is like a perfect, like, burlap-y color. It's got the marbling um, to it, so it's got a little bit of variegation in the tones. Um, super awesome, awesome fabric. And I have heard people say that they've used the back side of it, which is like a super cool idea because it is also a nice um, neutral, but doesn't have like that back, that marbling on it. So, um, but that's a really good go-to and easy to find in lots of different um, fabrics. So you can get that in Ada, Linen, um, Lugana, whatever you want, different counts. And then that's the dirty Dirty Ada, 14 count. So in comparison, Dirty is a little bit on the darker side. This has more of that orangey brown tone. And this is just sort of a deeper, darker, cooler tone. So there you go. Um, This is gorgeous, dark cobblestone. This is Lugana. And it is just beautiful. It's like a grayish brown. It's got a little bit of a green undertone. I think too, like anything that calls for like a black fabric, this might be a good alternative that is it's not too dark. I love this, um, the charcoal gray for a black alternative. I found that super easy to stitch on. Nice and dark, things still pop. But this is like a nice... Could be a good one, depending what is done on it. And then we have Mushroom, which is another favorite. Everybody, I swear, I hear people are always Mushroom, Mushroom, Mushroom. So I got that one in a 28 count, so I'm excited for that. Um, it is, I would say, kind of like a yellowier neutral, whereas this is light taupe. And this is kind of on the pinky, a pinky tone. Sometimes you can't really tell until I, I looked at these all in my natural sunlight during the day by a nice big window so I could get, and then wrote little notes so I could kind of make sure I'm describing the colors because I knew they'd look different down here and trying to show them. But this is mushroom and this is the light taupe. Um, so this has more of a pinkier tone, and this is, I would say, more of a yellowy. And then we've got beige. These are all Lugana. Um, so that is, again, a little bit more grayed out beige. It's a nice neutral. And then this one is stone. Stone gray. 
I think. Oh dear. I think it's still gray. It's really pinky and you probably can't even see that light just keeps bopping in and out. Okay. I'm going to try and share them. Oh yeah. I can see it here. Totally. I can see them here and I hope it shows, but yeah, you can kind of see this is the one I said is more greeny tone and that is, um, the beige and then the stone is the one right next to it that's the one I said was super pinky this one's a little bit pink which is the light taupe pink tone is what I'm trying to say and then this is the mushroom at the end which is a little bit more of a yellowy hue to it so very like that's what I'm trying to say is like if you're trying to shop online and you don't know your colors yet it's tricky so um, I hope this helps somebody. Um, I know lots of people already know their fabrics in and out and have their favorites, but maybe there's something that you haven't used before that you're curious about or just helped with some basic neutral colors. I don't think you could go wrong with any of these, especially with the beige and taupes and um, the grays. All of them are great, but just kind of depending on what you're stitching on, you might want a different hue to it. So the last thing I have to share with you is um, my, what's stitched on this one. And yes, I know my edges are not surged. That's okay. Um, this is one of my new designs that will be coming out soon. So that's Fresh Honey and got a little honey jar down here and there'll be a couple more there that I've got to finish off and then just fill in the rest of this white banner. So this is kind of like a little series that I've been doing. Um, started with, um, I guess it started with my, I just, I'm trying to remember <laughs> all the ones that I have out because I have a lot designed to release. So there is a lot more coming if you're enjoying this series. Um, but there is the Farm Fresh Carrots that I did for the Easter. And then um, I've got my Farm Fresh Strawberries, the Strawberry Patch. And this is the Fresh Honey. There'll be two other um, squares that go come out too with this. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is there'll be three B related um, squares. These are a 63 by 63 stitch. So it's kind of a nice size that I've been finding um, I enjoy doing. So I, I find them to be a bit like they're a nice size for display, but they're also kind of like um, a quick and easier stitch. Um, yeah, I've got a bunch coming. Um, I'm super excited about them. This is the fresh honey. And then that, like I say, there'll be two other B ones coming along and I've got another strawberry one. And yeah, you'll just have to wait and see what else comes. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have more like little sneak peeks and stuff. I love giving you guys little sneak peeks, um, cause it is fun to kind of, it's just fun to share what I'm working on. So, um, and you guys are so kind and supportive, um, and encouraging. So it's, it is nice to kind of see what you have to say, um, as it's coming together. And just, I know I love to see that kind of stuff too, is like what people are working on and like the process. So, um, yeah, that is fresh honey. Let me know what you think. Um, I did share a little sneak peek of the uh, strawberry one that is coming to soon. Um, and yeah, there's more coming. Lots, so much more coming. I am very, very excited. So I don't even know what else I'll end up creating. But that's the exciting part about it. Anyways, I think that is it. And I got just, <laughs> oh no, an hour and 20 minutes. Here we go. Okay, well. There you go. 
I think I got all the information in there. I'm sure I forgot a bunch. I was clearly just as rambly as the first time, but I guess I had lots to share. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I am sorry if about being sick, um, but I just really wanted to get this to you guys so that you can have it. And um, I will try and be back in the next um, couple of weeks. This was a longer period because I got hit with that blizzard. It kind of knocked a week off for me by the time I got to the fabric store. So I um, would like to be on a two-week schedule, but it'll kind of have to fluctuate a little bit, I'm sure, between two and three. Um, sometimes it might only be a week because I might just have that much to share with you. Or maybe what I can try to do is just do them more frequently so that there's not as much to fill your time. Okay, and now I've rambled again. Anyways, I am very excited. Just make sure, did I have anything else? No. I think that's it. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me. I sure hope this video makes it up to... <laughs> And if it does not, oh my goodness. Well, you won't see this if it doesn't, but here's hoping. I hope you all have a great time stitching between now and when I see you next. Please share any projects that you're working on. I love, 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 love seeing that. Um, and thank you again for everybody, all the love and support. You guys are the greatest. Okay. Take care. I'm going to go tuck myself into bed. Maybe I'll have a hot cup of tea before I go because I am cold from being in the basement. So <laughs> you guys have a great um, day and happy stitching. Bye. Thanks again for watching. If you're looking for me on Instagram or Facebook, you can find me at Erin Elizabeth Designs. And if you like what you saw today, please subscribe and hit that like button. You can also turn on the little bell to be notified for my next video.